CNBC News Special Report. Here's Peter Alexander. Good evening, I'm Peter Alexander with the very latest on President Trump's health as he begins his first full day at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center suffering from the effects of the coronavirus. The president's doctor, Sean Conley, is giving an update on his condition right now at Walter like Reed. Let's take a listen. Colonel Andrew Barr and all the medical and support staff here at Walter Reed for their tireless efforts, providing everything and anything the medical team, the president and I could need. This morning, the president is doing very well. Behind me are some of the members of uh, the president's medical team, uh, whom I'd like to introduce. Uh, Dr. Sean Dooley, pulmonary critical care. Dr. Brian Garibaldi, pulmonary critical care. Dr. Robert Browning, pulmonary critical care. Dr. Jason Blaylock, infectious disease. Dr. Wes Campbell, infectious disease. Dr. John Hodgson, anesthesia. Major Kurt Klein, army nurse. Commander Megan Nasworthy, Navy nurse. Lieutenant Juliana Lev Levopa, Navy nurse. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander John Shea, clinical pharmacist. And not present with us are Lieutenant Beth Carter, Lieutenant Maureen Meehan, both Navy nurses, and Dr. Jesse Schonow, director of our executive medicine program. As reported yesterday, consultation with this group, I recommended we bring the president up to Walter Reed as a precautionary me measure to provide state-of-the-art monitoring and any care that he may need. Just 72 hours into the diagnosis now, the first week of COVID, and in particular days 7 to 10, are the most critical in determining the likely course of this illness. At this time, the team and I are extremely happy with the progress the President has made. Thursday, he had a mild cough and some nasal congestion and fatigue, all of which are now resolving and improving. At this time, I'd like to bring up Dr. Dooley to discuss some of the specifics of the President's care. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Sean Dooley, as uh, Dr. Conley mentioned. I'll start off by uh, mentioning what, a, what an incredible, uh, how incredibly proud I am of our medical team assembled behind me uh, and the honor it's been to care for the, the President over these last uh, 24 hours here at Walter Reed. He's receiving outstanding multidisciplinary care, uh, the state of the science uh, for coronavirus infection. We are monitoring him very closely uh, for any evidence of complications from either the coronavirus illness or the therapies that we are prescribing to uh, make him better. We have monitored his cardiac function, uh, his kidney function, his liver function, all of those are normal. And the president this morning is not on oxygen, uh, not having difficulty breathing or walking around uh, the White House medical unit upstairs. He's in exceptionally good spirits. And in fact, uh, as we were completing our multidisciplinary rounds this morning, uh, the quote he, he left us with was, I feel like I could walk out of here today. And, and that was a very encouraging comment from the president. Moving forward, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce Dr. Garibaldi, who will talk about some of our therapeutics and the plan for uh, plan of care for today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dooley. And I'd like to echo the sentiment from the entire team, what a, a honor and a privilege it is to be part of this multidisciplinary unit to care for the president. Um, about 48 hours ago, the president received uh, a special antibody therapy directed against the coronavirus, and we're working very closely with the company to monitor him uh, in terms of uh, that outcome. Um, yesterday evening, he received his first dose of IV remdesivir and our plan is to continue a five-day treatment course for remdesivir. And the big plan for today, since he's in such great spirits and doing well, is to encourage him to eat, to drink, to stay hydrated, to be up out of bed, and to be working and doing the thing, things that he needs to do uh, to get well. Um, and I'll refer Dr. Connolly to any, any questions. Thanks, Brian. It's important to note the President's been fever-free for over 24 hours. Uh, we remain cautiously optimistic. Um, but he's doing great. Um, with that, oh, one other note. It should be clear that uh, he's got plenty of work to get done from the chief of staff, and he's doing it. Um, with that, if there's a couple questions about the president's health uh, in the last couple days. Sir, could you tell us the president's uh, oxygen saturation level, please? Yeah, so the, the last uh, saturation that we had up walking around, he was uh, about 96%. And he's receiving no 
diagnosed he has not received any supplemental oxygen? He's not on oxygen right now. That's right. He has not received any at all? He's he's not needed any, but any uh, this morning today at all. That's right. Do no, he's... Do you have an estimated date when he might be discharged? Uh, well, I don't want to put a hard date on that. Um, he's doing so well, but the, the, with a known course of the illness, days seven to ten, we get really concerned about the inflammatory phase, phase two. Um, given that we provided some of these uh, uh, advanced therapy so early on the course, a little bit earlier than, than most of the patients we know and follow, um, it's hard to tell where he is uh, on that course. And so uh, every day we're evaluating, does he need to be here? Uh, what does he need? Uh, and where is he going? What do you see as the probability that he will need supplemental oxygen going forward? Uh, I don't want to put a uh, percentage on that, but, but right now all indicators are that, uh, uh, that he'll remain off of oxygen uh, going forward. And in terms of like blood clots, pneumonia, bacterial infection, what do you see as the risk on that front? Uh, well, we know that all of them are risks associated with this condition. Um, uh, he is receiving all of the uh, standard of care and beyond uh, per routine, you know, international COVID protocols. Um, so uh, we're monitoring for all of that, um, but at the moment, there's no cause for concern. You said he was he's fever free now. What was his fever when he had one, sir? Uh, I'd rather not give any specific numbers, but he but he did have a fever uh, Thursday into Friday, and since Friday morning, he's had none. Okay. And what was the date? On top of the other antibodies. I'm sorry. Why remdesivir on top of the antibodies? Uh, so remdesivir works a little bit differently than the antibodies. We're maximizing uh, all aspects of his care, uh, attacking uh, this virus, you know, multi-pronged uh, approach. Uh, as the president, um, I didn't want to hold anything back. If there was any possibility that it would add value to his care and expedite his return, um, I wanted to take it. Oh, and uh, the team agreed. And that's what we proceeded. Doctor, what was the date of the president's last negative test? Uh, I'm not going to get into all the testing going back, um, but but he and all the staff routine uh, routinely uh, are tested, um, and so. Doctor, what is the uh, PPE protocol for uh, President Trump receiving visitors and uh, doctors? It's the same as any hospital has. Um, we have an area that's uh, that clean that you, you put your equipment on, and then beyond that, uh, everybody is fully gowned up, masks, gloves. Um, we're protecting ourselves and him. And see, have you done a screen? Has there been any sign of any lung damage whatsoever? We are we are following all of that. We do daily ultrasounds. We do daily lab work. The team is tracking all of that. Has there been has any sign of damage? Sir? I'm not going to go into specifics of what the findings of if any of that are. Can we just put you down on one thing? Has he ever? been on supplemental oxygen? He, right now, he is not on I understand. oxygen. I know you keep saying right, right now, but should we read into the fact that he had been previously? Yesterday and today, he was not on oxygen. So he has not been on it during this his COVID treatment? He's, he's not on oxygen right now. <laughs> has hydroxychloroquine been considered as a viable treatment option for the president? Uh, we discussed it. He asked about it. Uh, he's not on it now. And, and Dr. Of, what uh, symptoms, has he also experienced difficulty breathing? No. No, he has not. Never did. He had a little cough. He had the fever. More than anything, he's felt run down. Who is handling contact tracing? Is that the White House or CDC? The uh, the White House uh, uh, White House Medical Unit, in conjunction with uh, you know, in collaboration with CDC and local, state, and health departments, are are conducting all contact tracing per CDC guidelines. When was the positive diagnosis made? Uh, you said 72 hours. That would put it that Wednesday. Yeah, uh, so Thursday afternoon, uh, following uh, uh, following the news of a, a close contact, is when we, we repeated testing um, and given kind of clinical indications, had a little bit more concern, and that's when that late that night uh, we got the PCR confirmation that uh, that he was. Is there any clarity on how he became infected? Uh, not going to go into that. Um, as far as his care, it's, it's irrelevant. Or when? He became infected? Yeah, we're not going to go into that. Uh, we're just tracking his uh, clinical course and providing the best care we can. Will President Trump have to stay at Walter Reed to get uh, the five day rendered for your treatment? Um, we discussed that right now. Uh, if he needs all five days, uh, that will likely be the course. Um, but again, every day we're reviewing with the team uh, his needs for being here. And, uh, and as soon as he gets to the point where uh, it's not a requirement, he may still need some care, but if we can provide that downtown at the house, 
um, then, then we will transition at that point, as long as it's uh, safe and appropriate and the team agrees. In addition to his weight, does he have any other risk factors that make him more at risk for sort of a severe case? Well, uh, not particularly. I mean, he's, he's 74, he's male, um, and he is slightly overweight. Um, other than that, he's very healthy. Uh, his cholesterol is great, his blood pressure is great, he's not on medication for that. Um, he's up and active. You saw the, uh, his activity, the days leading up to, the long hours and everything else. You know, he's, he's able to handle it. Can you provide other vitals like heart rate, blood pressure, and temperature? Um, so his, his heart rate is in the uh, 70s to 80s. Uh, his blood pressure has remained where it's, where it's historically been during our physicals. Uh, you know, 110 to 120 to stop. He's great. It's never budged. I've uh, had no concerns there. So why was the decision made to transfer him here? Because he's the president of the United States. And obviously, if doctors have found that the prone position is helpful for COVID. Has he been in that at all? No, we actually, he asked about that. He did, uh, Thursday into Friday. Um, he's been briefed by the task force and all the scientists for months. And he brought that up, you know, as we were discussing his cough. And at that time, his oxygen levels were okay. We didn't feel like we needed to do it. We came up here, we discussed it with the team as well. Um, we consider all options, but he has not needed any of that. Why wasn't the first lady admitted as well? Uh, the first lady's doing great, thanks for asking. Uh, she has no indication for hospitalization, advanced therapy. She's convalescing at home. Uh, thank you. I'm going to try to pin you down one more time. I know you said there was no oxygen. Yeah, I'm not, today. Yeah. Does that yeah he's not on oxygen but did he uh, today. Any on, did he receive and, any on Thursday? And he's, what's today, Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. Uh, no, no, Thursday. Okay, so no Thursday, no Friday, no Saturday. That's fine. So that, that was why we were confused. Thursday, no oxygen, none at this moment. Yeah, and yesterday with the team, uh, while, while we were all here, he was not on oxygen. So has the president actually been admitted as a patient to this hospital? The president is a patient at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. <laughs> Is he on any steroids? See? Press, thank you. Thank you, last thank you very much. Last part, thank you. Thank you, guys. OK, thank you. That was Dr. Sean Conley, uh, President Trump's physician and several other doctors who are treating him right now at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Among the headlines from that conversation, we now understand that the president, according to the doctor, is doing very well, that he's extremely happy with his progress right now. The president delivering a message through the doctor to reporters who had gathered there saying, I feel like I could walk out of here today. No difficulty breathing. Apparently, he has been walking around in the presidential suite. We want to turn to NBC News' senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres for um, a little help, some expertise analyzing what we just heard from the doctors there. Dr. Torres, what struck me was the back and forth over whether the president has had oxygen at any point. It made it clear he hadn't had it Thursday, hadn't had any today. It wasn't entirely clear if he may have had it at some point over the course of Friday. Why is that so important? Well, I think it's so important. I think we could read between the lines that he possibly did have some yesterday. He wasn't answering the question directly. But the reason I think it's important is because this is a respiratory virus that affects the lungs. And so if he's on oxygen, then those symptoms are a little more than just mild symptoms. They push more into the moderate category. But the fact that he's gotten off the oxygen now at this point is good. It shows that he's improving. And like Dr. Connolly said, He's getting, he's doing better. He seems to be in better spirits. His vital signs look good. And for me, one of the most important things, because as a physician, a picture truly is worth a thousand words when it comes to your patient. The fact that he's up and around, he's getting around, he's talking to them, he's, he's asking all the right questions, extremely important. And he's on medications, he's on therapeutics that, as we know, he got the, the Regeneron polyclonal antibodies a couple days ago. He started on remdesivir, which now looks like a five-day course. He's one day into it. And like Dr. Connolly said, the most important thing is that five day from now, critical point where you start looking for inflammatory issues and that's when things can start turning. So my guess is they're probably gonna keep an eye on them until that point. And Dr. Torres, they said that he's been fever free now since Friday, since yesterday morning. What in particular will they be focusing on over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours? And what is that crucial window that they really need to keep a close eye on him looking for his recovery to really begin? 
So they'll be looking at his lab work and particularly at inflammatory issues with his lab work as well as oxygen to see if he needs to go, to go back on supplemental oxygen if he ever was on it to begin with because him going back on oxygen means that his lungs are being affected more than we think they are and that's a sign that things are starting to turn more complicated plus the fact that you know his inflammatory issues we know that once they get through coronavirus and start recovering the inflammatory issues become key because of the immune system starting to kick in into overdrive drive and starting to cause us overwhelming inflammation, that can produce what we call the cytokine storm. So they'll be watching that extremely closely. And like you said, there's this time window they're looking at around seven days where they want to make sure that everything's okay. And so there's still a days, days away from that. We're talking, you know, Tuesday timeframe, Wednesday timeframe before they get a good idea that he's going to improve and keep on continuing to improve. Dr. John Torres, we appreciate you being with us right now. I want to get to our colleague, NBC's political director and moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. And Chuck, as we bring you into this conversation, we want to alert folks that we have received right. some news, even as we were listening to the doctors for the president, that Governor Chris Christie, one of President Trump's debate advisors, who said he was at the White House on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, now reports that he has tested positive for coronavirus. So just a, a, a growing list of individuals who were around the president or at the White House in recent days now having tested positive. Many of them um, were in the event that you're looking at right there, the Rose Garden event, exactly a week ago, where the president celebrated his nomination of the Judge Amy Coney Barrett to fill the seat vacated by the loss of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Kellyanne Conway, the president's advisor, former advisor, testing positive. We learned Bill Stepien, his campaign manager, another name that we've heard about. Uh, as I turn to you, though, I want to just get your sense of this moment and this sort of moment of uncertainty for so many Americans exactly one month out from a presidential election as we wait for better understanding about the president's condition right now. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, um, as a layperson, you know, I, I, what I took away uh, from that briefing was more uncertainty, not more certain, not certainty or stability. I, I got a lot more uncertainty there. I mean, we're, we're basically in suspended animation in this campaign a bit. We know the president, we're now at least till Wednesday or Thursday of next week before we know the next step of, uh, of when I think that was, to me, the big takeaway here is that he's not getting out of the hospital any sooner than the middle of next week, if not later than that. And that that just takes up sort of more space of the calendar and obviously gets us, uh, um, gets us further away. And I do think, Peter, it, it calls into question, where should Vice President Pence be? I've noticed that he has a very, very busy schedule that they've put on him. They, they, apparently, he's supposed to fly to Utah beginning on Monday and, and be traveling a lot, you have to wonder while the president's in the hospital, while they're monitoring him so closely uh, uh, as they are right now, should he be traveling so much? Should he be circulating and putting himself at risk of getting the virus? And or should he be holding up a little bit more at the Naval Observatory, taking extra precautions and maybe doing a remote debate? So that that to me is what I'm getting out of this is we, we have a lot more uncertainty now. Um, I didn't get a lot. Uh, I didn't get new certainty. That's for sure. Yeah, you note that debate, the debate between Kamala Harris, of course, the Democratic vice presidential nominee, mm -hmm. and Mike Pence is scheduled for Wednesday. Worth noting that we learned today from the vice president's office that both the vice president and the second lady, Karen Pence, tested negative again today. They say that they are in good health at this time. I want to bring in Dr. Nahid Bedelia. She is an infectious diseases physician who has been watching us as well. And Dr. Bedelia, just if you can give us a sense as we keep a very close eye on the president, our understanding is that he will be there for the next several days. We know what the doctors are going to be keeping a clo close eye on, but what are your biggest concerns or what are the most important things that we should be attuned to? Thanks so much, Peter. I want to stress what my colleague Dr. Torres said is that there are these two components of this disease. You know, first it's the virus that does the damage, and then if it revs up the immune system, the immune system then starts damaging the body itself. And the strategy, you know, again, whether we agree with it or not, you know, and but this is probably the right strategy because it's the president of the United States, is that as long as they can guarantee the safety of the drugs that they're using, they're likely to take a more aggressive path. And the strategy that they've pursued in him is using these two medications that work differently, the monoclonal antibodies and remdesivir, that are going to decrease the amount of virus in his body so that he doesn't get to a point where the immune system revs up. 
So the kind of things that I think I'll be watching for, aside from the inflammatory markers on his blood work that Dr. Torres talked about, is that we're going to look to see how much virus is in his body. His medications that we're now giving him, are they keeping the virus low? So the viral load is something they might look at. They're going to follow him clinically as well to get a sense. What we've just to give you a sense, though, I think this may not be obvious to the outsiders, but having been involved in these sort of high-profile treatments with medical countermeasures and emerging pathogens, you know, because I was involved during the Ebola outbreak and I had colleagues who were admitted who were returning responders, what may not be obvious is that the wonderful physicians at Walter Reed are probably getting advice by CDC and NIH scientists and physicians. This is, this is something that they're probably doing in a collaborative fashion. And so these are very thoughtful steps in which they're proceeding um, and not something that potentially just one person is making a decision over. One of the striking things we heard, Dr. Bedelia, we thank you. One of the things that was striking in hearing from Dr. Sean Conley, the president's uh, doctor, just moments ago, as he said that the president is now 72 hours into his diagnosis. The public didn't become aware of the diagnosis until 1 a.m. Friday morning, yesterday morning, which is 36 hours ago, which in itself raises some questions. Among the president's loved ones tweeting their support toward him, his daughter Ivanka Trump, one of his senior advisors, saying, you are a warrior you will and will beat this. I love you, Dad. And from his son, Eric Trump, just a single word, warrior. We're joined now by NBC senior Washington correspondent Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, as we keep a close eye on the president's condition, it is remarkable to witness this constellation of contacts as we've described them. So many other individuals who have now tested positive as a result likely of their contact with the president or the first lady or perhaps Hope Hicks. We learned about Kellyanne Conway, Bill Steppe, and now three Republican senators we have learned have tested positive as well. Two of them who are in the Rose Garden, Mike Lee of Utah, one of them, Tom Tillis of North Carolina. And we also learned today that Ron Johnson of Wisconsin has tested positive. This is, a, is remarkable because at the highest levers of government and power in Washington, this appears to be a hot spot. And in fact, that Saturday event in the Rose Garden uh, could certainly be called a super spreader event. I was watching it live and watching the glad handing, the hugs, the kisses uh, in the Rose Garden afterwards, no one wearing masks. And it's now two members of the Judiciary Committee, and as you know, uh, now a third senator, Ron Johnson, the Republicans have the narrowest of margins to try to get this confirmation muscled through before November 3rd, which is certainly their intent, uh, according to Mitch McConnell only yesterday. So whether or not they can proceed, they're going to have, Lindsey Graham says, virtual hearings, which has not been approved in the past even for circuit court judges. And this is a lifetime appointment for the Supreme Court justice. So they're already violating their own norms in doing this, as they now say they will do. But they could lose the votes if they can't even participate virtually and if they can't proceed virtually as they say they will do. The floor vote, of course, most likely would have to be in person, and that's another issue. They, they can't lose two more votes. They have lost already two Republicans if their Democrats hold firm and if no Democrats, of course, get sick. And there were no Democrats at that event on Saturday, which is notable also because Supreme Court nominations have never been celebrated in this quite this fashion with lots of members there. In the past, it was the president perhaps bringing someone out into the Rose Garden for the press corps. But this kind of event was certainly much larger, much more celebratory. It was a political event as much as anything else. And you saw also uh, that the, the, well, Bill Stepien, the campaign manager, how does the campaign proceed at this time? I also noted, as you and Dr. Torres did, uh, Dr. Conley's uh, real... Uh, Discomfort and very careful wording of whether or not the president was ever on supplemental oxygen. I think it's very clear to infer from that that most likely he was on Friday at some point when they were making the decision as to whether to proceed to the hospital. And they are now proceeding with remdesivir, IV remdesivir. Uh, most likely that would certainly be completed before he leaves Walter Reed and returns to the White House. And, Andrea, worth noting, we have also learned some good news. The negative results so far from Ivanka Trump and her husband, Jared Kushner, both advisors to right. the president. All the president's children have tested negative at this point. I'm told that Barron Trump, the 14-year-old son of the first lady and President Trump, has uh, also tested negative and that he is being cared for with all the necessary precautions. As we noted earlier, this is now exactly one month, believe it or not, before Election Day. And I want to bring in my colleague Kristen Welker on that topic. Kristen, one of the real challenges right now for the Democratic knee, uh, nominee Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is how they go about 
uh, the next several days and weeks ahead. And frankly, whether in fact there will be a debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump before this election. Well, that's the big question, Peter, and you're absolutely right. Uh, this has thrown the campaign into disarray. We know that uh, former Vice President Joe Biden's campaign has taken down their negative campaign ads. He uh, says he tested negative twice uh, yesterday. Of course, he was at that debate with President Trump earlier this week. Now, Biden did have a campaign event in Michigan yesterday. He was delayed getting to that event, and his focus off the top was on the president, on the first lady extending his thoughts and prayers and also saying that this underscores just how dangerous and how serious this situation continues to be around COVID-19. As for Vice President Mike Pence, uh, we are told, as you reported earlier, that he and the second lady have tested negative again today. They are at the Naval Observatory. I am told today, and of course, watching this all very closely, uh, the former President Barack Obama, who tweeted yesterday, Michelle and I hope that the president, first lady, and all those affected by the coronavirus around the country are getting the care they need and are on the path to a speedy recovery. So what we really saw yesterday, Peter, was a bit of a pause in some of the bitter rhetoric. Now, the question becomes what happens next. President Trump, of course, has canceled his campaign events, the campaign hoping that he will be able to resume some virtually once he is feeling better. It's our understanding that at this point in time, the vice presidential debate is still scheduled to take place. But as you heard from Chuck, look, this is really going to be day by day. The vice president is going to have to make some decisions about whether or not he feels as though it's appropriate to travel once it gets closer. So the political world really watching and waiting to see what happens next here. Kristen, thank you. So the headline for the president's doctors this morning that he is, in their words, doing very well. There will be much more throughout the day on the networks of NBC and online at NBCNews.com. For now, we will return you to your regularly scheduled program. Programming. I'm Peter Alexander in Washington. This has been an NBC News special report.